Hi boys and girls, welcome back to the Parsha Studio. Which Yom Tov is coming up? Do you know? That's right, Purim! To start prepping for this special Yom Tov, we're going to be making not just any Hamantashen, but Hamantash s'mores. Here are the supplies that we will need. A mixing bowl, a clear cup for checking eggs, a mixing spoon, measuring cups, a one teaspoon measuring spoon, a rolling pin, a baking tray, parchment paper, and a three inch circle cookie cutter or glass cup of a similar size. And for the ingredients, we'll need flour, sugar, cocoa powder, oil, baking powder, eggs, and lastly, marshmallow fluff. Let's get started. Have an adult preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Crack and check three eggs and pour them into your mixing bowl. Add one and a quarter cup of sugar and stir the mixture with the spoon. Do you know why we eat hamantashen on Purim? There are a few reasons, but one of them, which we will explore today, has something to do with the sweet filling that hides inside. Next, add a half a cup of oil and mix well. Imagine you are playing with your friends in the park when suddenly you trip and fall. Now you've got to sit on the side while everyone else gets to play. Sitting on the side feels super boring. You start looking around to see what is going on around in the park. Add two and a quarter cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, and three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. Mix until the dough comes together. As you sit there, suddenly you notice a toddler walking outside of the park all by herself. You quickly call out to the baby's mother to alert her. The mother dashes to rescue her child. Afterwards, she comes over to thank you. It could have turned into a dangerous and scary situation, Chas v'shalem. Bar Hashem, now the child is safe. If you hadn't gotten hurt and been forced to sit on the side, you would not have seen what you saw. Although getting hurt may not have been fun, at the end of the day, you're able to see the good in it. Cover the dough and place it in the fridge for 45 minutes so it becomes less sticky and more firm. Take a large piece of dough and flatten it with your hand. If it's pretty sticky like my dough is, you can sprinkle a bit of flour to help with that. Then use the rolling pin to roll out the dough nice and thin, about 1 8 of an inch thick. Make sure it's not too thick and not too thin. Parm 2 is about seeing the good within events that didn't seem good. Even though there were no open miracles, we know it was Hashem who was making the whole story happen. Next, press your circle cookie cutter or your glass cup into the dough, forming a circle cutout. Repeat this step as many times as you have enough dough. Remove the extra dough from around the circles. In the story, Esther was forced to go to the palace and ended up being chosen to be queen, which she had no desire for. This was hard for Queen Esther because she just wanted to be back home with Mordechai. Despite the difficulty, when the time came, she was in the perfect position to save all the Jews from Haman's evil decree. Place a small spoonful of marshmallow fluff in the center of each circle, using two spoons. One to scoop out of the marshmallow fluff container and the other one to help scoop the fluff from the spoon to the hamantash circle. Then fold three sides in to form a triangle, leaving a small opening in the center so you can see the marshmallow fluff. Pinch the three sides very tightly so they stay closed even while baking. Place on a prepared cookie sheet. Repeat these steps with the rest of the dough. Reroll any dough scraps, then cut out circles and form them into hamantashen. Have an adult place the hamantashen in the oven to bake for 14 to 16 minutes or until the cookies are set but not yet hard. Enjoy your hamantashen and have a very happy Purim. We'll see you next week.